Hello everyone, good afternoon. This is Mr. Williamson. I am making this video to help those who may be a little rusty when it comes to calculating volume and area and surface area in this particular case. As you can see here, we have a cube, which is what we'll be working with in class. Uh, this particular cube is three centimeters by three centimeters by three centimeters. Uh, now essentially what we'll be starting out with is the surface area which will just be the area of one side multiplied by the number of sides. So that means that we'll take three centimeters times three centimeters and then multiply it by the front, back, left, right, top, and bottom. So that's six sides total. Uh, once we've done that, then we will calculate the volume, which is a three-dimensional measurement, meaning we'll calculate this way, this way, and this way. Uh, please excuse the crudity of my model here, but uh, for all our purposes, it'll be handy. Uh, so first, what we will calculate is the, uh, the area of one side, three centimeters by three centimeters. Over here, I've already worked it out, so you've got three centimeters times three centimeters, so three times three is nine. And then you're actually multiplying the units as well, so it's centimeters times centimeters, which gives you centimeters squared. Now you're not done yet at this point, that's only the area of one side. Next you have to multiply that by the six total sides that are there. So you would take that nine centimeters squared times six sides, and that gives you 54 centimeters squared, or square centimeters as some people prefer to say it. Now once you have that done, this number right here is your surface area. And it is a two-dimensional measurement, hence the number two there. Okay, next we will calculate the volume, which is the three dimensions, which would be three centimeters times three centimeters times three centimeters. That will give us the total volume of everything that this cube could hold if it were, say, hollow on the inside and you wanted to dump water in it. That's how many cubic centimeters you could put into it. Uh, so first, we do essentially the same thing, 3 centimeters times 3 centimeters times 3 centimeters, so that's 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3, which is 27. Then we multiply the units, so you have centimeters times centimeters, so that's centimeters squared, plus, times another centimeters, so that's centimeters cubed. Now this is your volumetric measurement. This one's a little easier. You're done here. So once that you have those numbers, then you can calculate the surface area to volume ratio. Now anytime you have a ratio, it is something divided by something else. So essentially what we have here is we take the surface area and divide it by the volume as though it were a fraction. And our numbers, if you recall, were 54, and we don't need to put the units here in this particular place because we're just using a ratio. So it was 54 centimeters squared for the surface area and then 27 cubic centimeters for the volume. Now once we do that, it's a simple mathematical operation. Divide 54 by 27, and what you get is 2 over 1, which, you know, I know as a fraction is just 2, but we, we put it as a 2 to 1 surface area to volume ratio. Now this ratio is important any time that you have anything that's trying to absorb something, which is what we're going to be looking at with the cell. Uh, feel free after watching this video to maybe watch a few other videos. Uh, there are some experiments on YouTube here that are very similar to what we're going to be doing. Essentially we're going to be calculating the surface area to volume ratio and seeing if it's better to have a high ratio or a low ratio. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in class.